This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 479, Facing Your Fears, Living in the Key of Awesome, by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. And I'm your host and narrator, Dr. Neil Malik. Happy Thursday, welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I read to you from popular health and fitness blogs to help you optimize your health. I read from Zen Habits, Ben Greenfield, Nerd Fitness, and many more. It's like a gigantic ongoing audiobook that's free of charge. Now, I love reading Roger's blogs, so I'm gonna keep this short for you today because I'm excited to get right to it and start optimizing your life. Facing Your Fears, Living in the Key of Awesome by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. Whether you know it or not, we're all on a cliff together. Some are standing around idly, waiting for things to happen, while others are shuffling around, moving towards something. They're not exactly sure what just yet, but they have this inkling in the back of their skulls that there has to be more to life than this. The first group, the standers, for the most part, without a major intervention, they're hopeless. The second group, let's say the watchers, that's where most of us are, where you are, otherwise you wouldn't be hearing this. But I don't wanna focus on them either. It's this third group that I'm most obsessed with. There is a difference between this group, the jumpers, and everyone else. For them, that mere tickle is transformed into a drum beating inside their mind, beckoning them forward, while others simply meander around. They're called jumpers because they don't just listen to the battle call, they answer it. They dive off the cliff and into the frightening unknown in search of what drives them. But why the f*** are they jumping? They don't know what's out there. For all they know, it could be a land filled with quicksand pits, poisonous fruits, machine gun toting fembots, and velociraptors equipped with samurai swords and dream-killing missiles. As someone who's run the gamut from stander to watcher to jumper, I can assure you that taking the leap of faith is not only worth the risk, but is absolutely necessary if you want to live the kind of life that you imagine yourself living. I don't claim to have all the answers, as I'm still making my way through this world myself, but I want to share some strategies that I've used to deal with fear along the way. Strategy one. Tackling your fears may get you killed. Javi Brooks over at The Fluent Self got me thinking about fear in a different way. First things first, we're not gonna tackle our fears head on from the jump. Why not? Because that's a surefire way to get taken out faster than General Sal's chicken. That would be similar to starting a video game, completing the basic tutorial, and then waltzing up to the final boss ready for a showdown. Some fears are rational, but most are simply powerful illusions brought about to keep you on the defensive reacting instead of being proactive. Therefore, the first step towards fear domination is not going after them right away, but simply acknowledging that they are there. Strategy two, become curious. If you want to fear off, treat it as a curiosity rather than something to be afraid of. It hates that. This is where the actual facing of your fears come into play. March right up to the beast's den and look it up and down. Walk around, study it, learn all that you can about it. When you notice that sense of dread creep up inside your chest, ask yourself why you feel this way. Ask yourself as many questions as you can about why this situation or action scares you so much. Is it from a past experience that you or someone else had? Is it your imagination getting the best of you? The more you familiarize yourself with this seemingly foreign emotion, the more you'll realize that it's actually not some malevolent emotion, but your friend. Your fear loves you. It loves you so much, in fact, that it'll do everything in its power to keep you from being hurt or disappointed. Sadly for you, fear is the offspring of Professor Xavier and therefore has the ability to project devastatingly horrible outcomes of future events into your head in an attempt to keep you from breaking out of your comfort zone. Don't jump out of that plane, you'll die. Don't ask that question, they'll think you're a fool. Don't pursue that idea, you will fail. Strategy number three, ask what if. Now that you know your fear is coming from a place of love and not hate, you can get down to the business of letting it down gently with these two simple words. What if? What if you don't die when you jump out of that plane? What if it's an even greater feeling than you thought it would be? What if you help yourself and others when you get the answer to that question? What if you don't fail? What if you succeed? What will your life be like? Fear, obviously, won't have any logical response to these questions and will respond by yelling even louder but you're prepared. Let fear know that you're a grown man or woman and are capable of making decisions for yourself without its input. Strategy number four, look to the jumpers. Don't ever take fear's word for anything. 
unless you want to become one of the standers or watchers. Fear's main job is to keep you paralyzed, keeping the impossible from becoming possible. So the only way forward is to challenge its claims. The most difficult part is that you haven't done what you want to do just yet. So you really don't have any tangible ground on which to base your hopes and dreams on. The answer, look to the jumpers. Chances are anything that you want to do has been done before. And if that's the case, then you're literally surrounded by a wealth of evidence that you can use to counter fear's persistent urgings. Take advantage of these resources. If you lived in Gotham City and wanted to become a crime fighter, it'd be silly not to look to Batman for advice. Want to become a motivational speaker? Anthony Robbins has already paved the way for you. Dream of writing a book on a subject that you're passionate about? Chris Brogan and Julian Smith have you covered. The best thing about this group of people is that, having once been in your shoes, more often than not, they'll be willing to help quell any fears that you have as long as you're willing to ask for their advice. The jumpers are here to show you what is possible. If it can happen to them, it can happen to you as well. Strategy five, just do it. Nike had it right all along. With all of this lovey-dovey, touchy-feely conversation going on, it's easy to just acknowledge that your fears are there and to not do anything to move past them. Likewise, I've seen several would-be jumpers get stuck in the planning phase far too long and then accomplish nothing. Like my good friend JC says, planning is good, but doing is better. You've gone on your quests. You've upgraded your weapons and armor, but sadly, you've leveled up as far as you can without facing the boss and progressing forward. You're ready now, and the stakes are higher than ever. When in doubt, shoot first and figure it out as you go. At worst, you'll fall short of your initial goal while at the same time, proving that your fears were grossly exaggerated, using this experience to then move you forward over time. At best, you'll reclaim your life from the clutches of fear and take a huge step past your peers and towards your dreams. You just listened to the post titled Facing Your Fears, Living in the Key of Awesome by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. It's funny because social psychologists and behaviorists have actually come up with a model to explain what Roger was discussing. So you know how he was talking about the standers and the watchers and the jumpers. They have different terms for these folks, but either way, Roger was speaking basically the same language. We know from lots and lots of data that there are those folks out there who have in their heads committed to something. Maybe it's eating more healthfully, exercising, stopping smoking, whatever. But just because they've made that decision doesn't translate to action. So these folks might tell themselves or tell others, yes, I know, I get it. It's so important for me to start exercising, but I just don't have time right now. Or I just can't. I have to get a gym membership first and buy some exercise clothes and I don't have a good pair of running shoes. But again, they've made that decision and they've verbalized how they need to start getting active. But the action never happens. Psychologists call these folks contemplators. They understand the need to change, but they really haven't taken those next steps to actually do anything about it. So these folks are like the watchers. But then psychologists do admit that there are those folks who just jump in and take action. And in fact, this is one of the few times where psychologists and behaviorists simplify things. And they say, if a person actually takes action, they're in the action stage. Going back to Roger's terms, these would be the jumpers. So if you're in the contemplation stage where you understand you need to change but haven't done anything yet, I will echo strategy number five. Just do it. Now really quickly, before I go, if you wanna show some support for our podcasts, there are many ways to help out, both free and otherwise. Just come by oldpodcast.com slash support to check it out. Thank you as always for listening and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, And together, we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode. 
and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.